Microsoft Windows SharePoint Services, or WSS, is a free add-on for Windows Server 2008. WSSS works as an internet browser-based collaboration system. Using WSS in the workplace means that a user can make announcements, share documents, have discussions, set up tasks, and even host websites that need access to a shared workspace. Organisations can use WSS for their internet website or just use it to exchange information throughout the organisation, or even just departments and teams. WSS provides a centralised environment for users to collaborate and share information. WSS does not come with Windows Server 2008 and must be downloaded from the Microsoft website. It requires .NET 3.0 Framework and ISS to run. Once WSS is installed and set up, it will run on port 80. If you have another website running on port 80, WSS will disable it. Keep this in mind before installing WSS. If you want to run a website on the same server as WSS, you will need to change the website's port. WSS can be installed on any edition of Windows Server 2008 but keep in mind that it has limited features if installed on the web server edition. The licensing of the web server edition only allows you to create public websites. For this reason, the web server edition of Windows Server 2008 cannot be used to host WSS when used on an intranet environment, which is most likely where you'd want to use it. WSS on web server edition can also not be installed in standalone mode. The back end of WSS must be installed on another server. For these two reasons, I would not recommend installing WSS on the web server edition. Let's have a closer look how to install WSS. First of all, you need to install the .NET 3.0 framework. This will also install ISS. Run Server Manager from Administrative Tools, select Features, and then select the option Add Features. Select .NET Framework 3.0 Features and accept the prerequisite of ISS. When the wizard asks about installing additional ISS components, press Next. The default options are fine to run WSS. Once .NET 3.0 is installed, run Windows SharePoint Services install. Once you are past the Welcome and License screen, you have the option of performing a basic or advanced install. If you are installing a standalone version of SharePoint, you can select the basic option. I will select Advanced to show you the additional options. If WSS is going to be part of a server farm, then select the top option, Web Front End Only. In this install, I will only have a single standalone server, so I will select the option, Standalone. In standalone mode, SharePoint will use the local install of Windows Internal Database to store its data. Windows Internal Database is a scaled down version of SQL Server. If you select Server Web Front End, you will need to have a SharePoint database set up in SQL Server before you start the install. In the Data Location tab, you can change the location that WSS will store its files in. If you are using this server as a search server, remember, you need to have enough room on the server for the search index. These can become quite large. Lastly, you have the Feedback tab. Since this is a test environment, I will switch Feedback to No. SharePoint will now install itself on the local server. Once done, it needs to be configured. To do this, run SharePoint Product and Technology Configuration from Administrative Tools under the Start menu. The wizard will finish the setup of your WSS server. There are no options to configure. Once done, the setup program will launch Internet Explorer and attempt to connect to your local ISS server on port 80 to access WSS. There you have it. Windows SharePoint Services is installed and ready to use. Once you have installed SharePoint, you should set up the accounts that it will use when it runs. When doing this, you should follow Microsoft's principle of least privilege. This means assigning the least amount of permissions to get the job done. Once you have created the service account, Ensure the account has access to all the servers in your server farm, if you have a server farm. You should also change security accounts and other configuration using the STSADM tool. The name of this tool may seem a little bit strange, but if you consider that SharePoint used to be called SharePoint Team Services, 
the STS in the name makes sense. Let's have a look how to change the accounts in SharePoint. First of all, launch the SharePoint admin tool from the start menu. Once you are logged in, select the operations tab. To set the service account for SharePoint, go down to service accounts under security configuration. From here, you can set the accounts that will be used by SharePoint. If you want to change the account for your web applications, select the option and then select web service and application pool. Once you have done that, you can choose the account that you want to use at the bottom. When I press OK, I will get a message saying that ISS needs to be restarted using the ISS reset command. If I now open a command prompt, I can use the STS ADM command to change account information. The STS ADM command line utility is located under program files slash common files slash Microsoft shared slash web server extensions slash 12 slash bin. It is a long directory, so before I run the command, I will add some spaces before the command. This way, when I start typing the command, it will appear on a new line. To update the account information, type STS ADM minus O for operation, followed by the operation, which in this case is update farm credentials. In the parameter section, I will enter in a username and password. Notice again, I get a message saying that I need to run ISS reset. If I now run ISS reset, ISS will stop and start again, refreshing the account information. When you set up SharePoint or any other service in Windows Server 2008, make sure you follow the principle of least privilege to keep your system safe. When you install SharePoint, you will need to consider installing some virus software designed for SharePoint. SharePoint stores its data in an SQL database and thus a standard virus scanner will not be able to scan any of the documents in the database. There are a number of different virus products on the market designed to work with SharePoint. First there is Microsoft's Forefront product. In a moment I will give a demonstration of how to install and use this product. There are a number of third party vendors that also offer virus protection for SharePoint. These include Symantec, AVG and McAfee just to name some of the major ones. All of these products will scan the SharePoint SQL database and ensure that it is virus free. If you install any of these products, make sure that you also install a server product as well. This will give you a complete virus protection solution. Let's have a look how to install and configure Forefront for SharePoint. To install Forefront, first you need to download the setup program from the Microsoft website and run it. Once you pass the welcome and license screen, at the customer information screens you'll be asked if you want to perform a local or remote install. In this case, I want to install Forefront to the local server. Next select the type of install, either client or full install. The client admin allows you to administer Forefront install from another computer, for example, your desktop computer. In this case, I want the full install. Next you can choose to download updates for the install. It is a good idea to select this option unless you are on a computer that cannot access the internet. Microsoft have 8 different virus engines in their product. You can select up to 5 of them. If you need to choose certain virus engines, you can select them here. Otherwise, accept the default. You can always change these options later on if you wish. This screen reminds you about updating the virus signatures after the install. If you need to access a proxy server to get through to the internet, you can enter it in here. This server has a direct connection to the internet, so I will just press next here. Once I accept the install path and the program folder path, I need to enter in a username and password to access the SharePoint database. Since this is a test environment, I will just use the domain administrator's account. In a production environment, you should use an account that only has access to the server or servers that are running SharePoint. Forefront will now install. Once complete, I can run the Forefront admin tool from the start menu to configure Forefront. Remember, Forefront is a commercial product, so you'll need to purchase it if you want to use it in the long term. There are a lot of settings in Forefront. If you are planning on using it, you should spend some time going through them all. You will notice an option Configure SharePoint WSS Antivirus Settings. If I select this, I will be taken directly into the SharePoint admin tool. To configure the antivirus settings in SharePoint, Select the Operations tab. From here, select the option Antivirus under Security Configuration. There are not that many options to configure 
and the default will work well for most installs. First you will notice that scan, upload and download documents is ticked by default. The next option, allow users to download infected documents, is not ticked by default. This is a good thing. I am not sure why you want to allow users to download documents that have viruses in them. The last option, attempts to clean infected documents. This is something you may want to consider switching off. Sometimes, during the cleaning process, the file can be damaged. It is up to you if you leave this option on or not. In most cases, I will leave this option ticked and if something does go wrong, I will restore the file from backup. The antivirus timeout option you may want to change if you are having performance problems. If the server is slow responding to requests, you may want to consider lowering it. The next option, number of threads, is how many copies of the antivirus the computer will run at once. More threads use more RAM and CPU, but increase the response time on busy servers. If the server has enough RAM and CPU, you may want to consider putting this value up. If your performance is slow, you may want to consider reducing the number of threads. That's it for SharePoint configuration. If I go back to Forefront now and select Antivirus, you will notice I can select which file scanners to use. I can also change the BIOS setting. This determines how accurate virus scanning is versus performance. You can also set the action when a virus is found. If I select Scanner Update, I can set how often the virus signatures are updated. By default, the signatures are updated once a day. As you can see, the configuration and install of the virus software is quite easy, and in most cases, the defaults work well. Remember that if you do decide to use SharePoint, you need to purchase a virus solution, otherwise the documents in your SharePoint SQL database will not be scanned and can introduce viruses on your network. Windows SharePoint Services has a built-in backup and restore feature. This feature can be used without the need to shut down any of the SharePoint services or schedule downtime. The backup supports full and differential backups. Differential backups only save data that has changed since the last full backup. To perform a full restore using a differential backup, you also need the last full backup. Using the restore function, you can also migrate an existing install from one SharePoint server to another. Let's have a look how to perform a backup and restore using SharePoint. To perform a backup, first run the SharePoint administration tool from administrative tools in the start menu. Once you are logged into the admin tool, select the tab operations. From here, you want to go down to the backup and restore section and then select the option perform a backup. On this screen, you can decide which parts of your install you want to backup. To backup everything, Select the option Farm at the top. Once you have selected what you'd like to back up, select the option Continue to Backup Options. On this screen, you can enter where you'd like the backup to be stored. Multiple backups can be stored in the same directory. The backup is set to full by default. You can select Differential to save space in the backup, but remember, you need to keep the last full backup to restore from a differential backup. Once you are done, Press the OK button. If you press the refresh button, you can see how your backup is running. If I now go to the operations tab, I can go down to backup and restore section and select backup and restore history. This will show all the backups that have run on this server. If I select the operations tab, I can go back and this time select the option restore from backup. Finally, all I need to do is specify the directory the backup files are in. Once I press OK, I will be given a list of backups that are in the directory. All I need to do now is select the backup and select the option Continue Restore Process. On this screen, I can select which parts of the backup I want to restore. For this example, I will restore the web content and content database. Once I select Continue Restore Process, I will be taken into the last screen of the restore process. Here I can select New Configuration or Same Configuration. If I select Same Configuration, the restore process will restore with the same name and database name as stated in the backup. If you are performing a disaster recovery, this is what you want. If you are migrating the data from one server to another, select New Configuration 
and then change the options at the bottom of the screen as required. Press OK and the restore will start. This covers the basic of SharePoint configuration.